On that cheery note, let's bring in Emily Parker. She's Coindesk's executive director. <laughs> Emily, uh, I mean, there are some interesting positives to point out here. Number one, not sure there are any taxpayer bailouts at least yet uh, taking place here, nor do I really hear people asking for it. Number two, doesn't really seem to be bleeding over into broader uh, systemic risk and into the financial system. Um, so, yeah, those are some of the, the silver linings, I guess I'd mention. Yeah, I mean, you just named a list of some very problematic things. So basically, are, there are two things affecting the crypto market. One is not specific to crypto, and one is specific to crypto. The one that is not specific to crypto is that the crypto market has become more tied into equities markets. And so some of these larger concerns that are affecting equities markets are affecting crypto as well. You know, concerns over interest rate hikes or just general concerns about an economic recession. So that's kind of one thing. The other thing are, as you mentioned, there are some things that are very specific to the crypto industry, namely some, some projects in the crypto industry that have just had a lot of drama recently. So there was the Terra Luna debacle, which was basically the implosion of an algorithmic stablecoin project. And more recently, crypto lender Celsius, which has frozen user withdrawal, frozen user withdrawals for weeks now. So, you know, there's sort of two camps here. One is non-crypto and one is crypto. Yeah. So w what do you think is most important to follow from here? I mean, we haven't seen you know, we've seen smaller players, for instance, gating withdrawals. We haven't really seen like a Coinbase doing that to a, a great extent. I mean, that could really change the confidence level. Um, we spoke with a guest yesterday who said the Goldman's, you know, digital currency or whatever they call it conference in New York last week was still a standing room only crowd. So I, I can't tell if if the bulls should want sentiment to be even worse than it is right now or, or what what direction we go from here in terms of where there might be real long term opportunities. Well, some of it will to be depend on how we actually get out of this mess, right? So, you know, I think right now all eyes are on Celsius, this crypto lender that has been frozen user withdrawals. The problem is, is that when it comes to decentralized finance or DeFi, so many of these projects are intertangled. They borrow, they lend from one another. So that's the problem. There's just a lot of entanglement. So I think people are still seeing the fallout. You know, you have one project go down and then there can be kind of a domino effect. Um, and then I think, you know, there are concerns over, for example, the major stable coin tether you know what happens if if there's a problem with tether so you know there definitely are more things that could happen so but also again as we said there's kind of these larger macro concerns which don't have to do with crypto and so even if crypto does get its house in order it's still subject to some of these same problems that we're seeing affecting the equities market finally it, more in the news today but it looks like grayscale is going to sue the sec over not uh being allowed to become a bitcoin etf what do you make of that so this is basically a big conflict just between a lot of crypto proponents and regulators in general. It sort of reflects a very different worldview. So on the one side, you have the SEC, at least part of the SEC, claiming that they are refusing this in an attempt to protect investors. And they are OK with, for example, a Bitcoin futures ETF because Bitcoin futures are regulated by the CFTC. So they feel that by, you know, Bitcoin, they, they cite market manipulation, you know, they they, they, they claim this is a kind of investor protection. Then you have proponents like Grayscale and other pro spot ETF companies who are saying that actually it's the opposite. By bringing a Bitcoin spot ETF sort of under the SEC regulatory framework, you would actually protect investors more because people are going to buy Bitcoin anyway, right. and they would just buy Bitcoin in less regulated And maybe ways. that's the final question here is the regulatory footing we came into the crypto boom on should it look different on the way out? I mean, even as large as a question is combining the SEC and CFTC or, or two, I mean, this has revealed some significant gaps in coverage. And obviously, they're going to be late and try to clean all this up after the fact. But how big should the reforms be, I wonder? They, they should and will be very big. The question is when. It's not going to be immediate. It's going to take a while for any regulation to go through. But the, the, the key issue here, which you know we've talked about a bunch of times, is regulatory clarity. There are so many gray areas in U.S. crypto regulation. And what happens is you end up having regulation by enforcement. You have these projects that sort of go off the rails, and then the SEC goes after them. But that's not the most effective way to regulate an industry. It would be much better to have proactive, clear regulatory framework so everybody he knows what they should and should not be doing. Right, exactly. exactly. Or they'll just learn from the price action uh, the hard way, I guess. Emily, exactly. thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it today. Emily Parker of Coindesk.